Growing up on a reservation, I was taught not to ask for things. Part of our generosity on the reservation is that we offer it to you. So I would never ask somebody, are you hungry? I would simply offer you food. I think something that, that I learned on my own when I first entered the university system as a student athlete was that I needed help and I, I just didn't have the language to ask for it, even to say, can you please help me? So I first met Natalie sometime around 2013 when she was working with her tribe, Mojave tribe, to reclaim and rethink larger questions about bird songs in the language as one way to engage in language revitalization. But what she was really interested in is how do we perpetuate this and keep it so that it's here for generations to come. One of the problems with the ways in which indigenous communities have been studied in the past is that knowledge has been taken from them and made not theirs. What Natalie does in her work with the Mojave language is to keep that language alive and vital within a community without trying to make it for someone else. She brings a sincere enthusiasm and a new way to think about the page and how the page reaches an audience. So she engages people in very physical, very different ways things that, that nobody has really uh, done very well before. She's at the forefront of new ways to present her work, to, to think about her work, and when she's writing, I have to say, she's just fearless. She was invited into the English department because of her expertise, not only in poetry and indigenous studies, but in sustainability and the work she does on the environment. I think a lot about exchange of information and energy with my students versus um, having this kind of hierarchical uh, relationship. So I try to carry that, that lesson that I learned at home, which is I'm not going to ask you, are you hungry? I'm simply going to offer you, you know, food, for example. And so in my classrooms, I think that's something I try to carry into those spaces with my students so that it, suddenly it feels like these are these things I, I have that I'm also wondering about. I mean, it's a strange thing to, that it's called a, a genius grant, you know, and, and I'm very aware that there are hundreds and thousands of people out there who might also be recognized as having done something that somebody feels like is, is pushing into a new space of wonder or possibility. One of the news articles that came out said, like, there were two Latino women who won the MacArthur Fellowship. And then just beneath it, there was another article that said, there were two indigenous women that won, you know, the MacArthur Fellowship. And, I mean, those things impacted me m most, I think, is to suddenly realize, like, somewhere someone is looking and saying, like, I see myself in them. One way that ASU benefits by having Natalie Diaz on faculty is that every single creative writing student wants to study with her. That's not just because she's becoming famous. That's because how she teaches, who she is, how she sees the world, what she does. The classroom is, I think, definitely a very important space, but I'm also, you know, really interested in, in how I can teach them how to live the lives they want to live as instructors, as, you know, even as just makers, uh, you know, makers of language, makers of questions.